Hello. On this lecture, I'm going to go over at a high level what we're here to learn this semester in 375. So if we take a look at the syllabus, uh, we can see that we're covering a lot this semester, but I'm going to conceptually divide the, the class into basically three chunks. At the very beginning of the semester, we're going to focus on uh, data itself, how we manage data, how we organize and manipulate data, how we visualize data. And data is going to be front and center in this course as the motivating, uh, motivating topic behind uh, the, this, the idea of environmental modeling and environmental data management uh, and data analysis. Uh, so we're going to move on from just you know, looking at data by itself and learning how to uh, do that to moving on to data analysis. This is going to start with some basic concepts on probability and, and univariate regression, so kind of picking up where previous courses and statistics you've had will have finished off. I suspect a lot of you have coming into this having taken 270. Uh, we'll learn about uh, model assessment, you know, how to learn how well different models are performing, model selection, so choosing between different alternative models. Moving on from simple univariate regression to multiple regression, where we have multiple uh, covariates predicting. Move on to nonlinear uh, polynomial regression, interaction terms, generalized linear models, uh, and then move from there on to more advanced statistical techniques such as uh, maximum likelihood and uh, Monte Carlo methods. And this is all kind of uh, just a progression of, of statistical modeling from very simple up to more complex statistical modeling. Uh, and then the last part of the class, we're gonna kind of hopefully seamlessly transition from statistical modeling uh, to more process-based modelings, uh, looking at uh, population models, coupled population economic models, and models for uh, fluxes or the movement of things across space in terms of uh, diffusion, pollution, soil, stuff like that. Uh, we're going to wrap up the end of the semester talking about how we use models in decision making. And then finally, at the end, have a brief primer on, on Bayes' theorem and Bayesian statistics. Uh, there's 15 weeks to the course as a whole. Across those 15 weeks, uh, we're going to have two exams uh, in week six and week 14. These are both going to be take home exams. And this kind of reflects. Uh, a real emphasis in the course as a whole on hands-on application. So these are going to be problems where you're given uh, data or a modeling problem and you have to kind of implement uh, a solution to that, a data analysis or, or a simple model or model data, bring models and data together. Uh, there's, it's also a lab-based course. There's a total of uh, 11 labs, of course, across the semester. Uh, we do not have uh, a lab in week six because of exam one. We don't have a lab in week 14 or 15 because of exam two. And then we don't have a lab in week 13 because of Thanksgiving recess. So really the labs will, you know, the last lab will occur in week 12, be due in week 13. And then we really kind of shift from there into that last take home exam. Uh, so as I said, it's a lab-based course. Labs are, are Friday. This semester, labs are, are purely virtual. Uh, like I said, there's 11 labs worth five points each, giving us 55% of the class uh, class grade. So lab that, that hands-on lab work is the majority of the course grade. Combine that with the take-homes, uh, two of those, 10% each. It's another 25%, 75% purely hands-on that's really the emphasis in this course is really a, you know, a practical hands-on approach to, to modeling and statistics. Um, the remaining 25% of the class grade is split between uh, short quiz questions, which will be you know, at the end of lecture videos or in between lecture videos. Uh, and then the hands-on activities and participation in the in-class discussion Activity. So just as a reminder, I've, I've said this in email, uh, the, the labs will be purely virtual. The, the lecture videos will be, the, the course is flipped. So the lecture videos will be uh, online. The lecture quizzes will be online. You need to 
uh, watch those videos and complete those quizzes before uh, coming to class. And then the in-class component will be a mix of kind of discussion Q&A related to the topics we're learning on and, and hands-on activities uh, to kind of deepen our understanding and dive into uh, shorter, um, uh, shorter hands-on activities than the labs. So things that could be completed you know, quickly over the course. Um, want to emphasize that the, the hands-on activities in this class are, and, and the labs are, are completely computer-based, so make sure you bring uh, your laptop to lab and to lecture if you are, are you know, particularly, if, uh, you, you'll need, obviously, your laptop to get onto the, the virtual lab, but, you know, we'll be doing computer-based activities. We'll be doing computer-based activities uh, in the discussion portions. Uh, and, and in particular, one of the things that's a real emphasis in this class isn't just interacting with um, kind of point and click software, but actually kind of getting under the hood a little bit and learning uh, the basics of coding. Uh, and it's really motivated primarily, again, through uh, the fact that we are in an era of big data and to even just do basic data now, to do data analysis that's beyond just the basics kind of re requires learning how to use computers uh, in a coding way to manipulate data, to analyze data, and, and to um, implement and analyze simple models. Uh, specifically in our, the computer labs and activities in this class are going to really focus on a, a very common statistical scripting language called R. Um, and we're going to use R through this uh, interactive development environment called R Studio, which is, so R is the underlying software, uh, the underlying language, and R Studio is kind of the, the graphical front end for, uh, it makes using that easier. Uh, there is a native R front end, it's not nearly as uh, user friendly or, or powerful as R Studio. Um, and so that's, it's open source software, so you can go and freely download both R and R Studio. And we'll be using those extensively through the course. Uh, and so I wanted to wrap up this specific video with a few pointers on, on how, to well, how to do well in this course, given the content that we are covering. So first I want to emphasize that, that lab attendance is required, even though it's a virtual lab this semester. Um, so that means you need to be logged on. You need to stay logged on for the duration of the course, uh, of the dur duration of the lecture and, and lab, unless you have finished the lab and, and already uploaded it onto Blackboard. If you've uploaded onto Blackboard, you're done. You can leave early. Uh, but if you haven't actually submitted the completed lab uh, to Blackboard, we, we need you to attend through the duration. Uh, this you know, strict requirement it is strict. If, if you are not logging in or, or leaving early, you automatically get a, a zero in the lab. You're not allowed to, to submit it. Uh, that may seem a little draconian, but I will say that before we instituted that, that rule in 375, uh, we had a, a, too many people that were getting behind on labs, uh, were missing things that were discussed in, in the labs, and uh, you know, would come to office hours asking questions that were already covered in labs or were just failing to turn labs in at all. They were really getting behind. And, and once they missed one lab, they would just start piling up and they get further and further behind in the class. Um, so it's really, you know, this material really does build on its, on each cell. Each lab builds on the others in many ways. So it's really important to not, uh, not get behind and to really you know, use that lab time effectively uh, to make progress. Uh, likewise, uh, it's really important to turn in those labs. There's a 5% penalty per day for turning in labs late. Uh, and likewise, to turn in the take-home exams. That seems like it's obvious, but you know, once in a while we have folks that just don't turn those in or turn them in too late. Uh, there's a 10% penalty for the first take-home exam. Uh, and there's a, a zero points if the second take-home exam is turned in late. And that's because the second take-home ex exam is due uh, at the period that would be the um, finals period. So the, the, you know, you have to turn in things by then. It, it, all material basically in this class drops to 0% if they're not turned in by that, uh, when that uh, final in finals week would occur. Because 
you know, from when that final ends, we, you know, uh, Betsy and I only have a couple days to get everything graded and everything submitted. So it's really important that everything be turned in at, at a minimum by that point. Uh, another important part of, uh, about this class is the importance of not plagiarizing. That would seem obvious and in many ways parts of it is. So uh, text can't be plagiarized. I think we've never really had problems with that in 375. People tend to turn in uh, their own answers to questions. Uh, but also, code can't be plagiarized, and that's where we've we've run into trouble in the past, uh, where people start cutting and pasting uh, code from their their classmates and turning it in as if it was theirs, and you know without really any understanding of what they're doing. And this can be a, a gray area for some because I do want to emphasize that we really do encourage people uh, to work together on the labs, but you still have to turn in your own work your own answers to questions, but also your own code. So don't, don't just copy and paste uh, the code that you know, one of your classmates did. Don't just take their whole lab and, and put your name on it and change you know, the answers without changing the code, but really take the time to see how they solved a problem. You can implement that same, you, know, you can work together to implement those solutions, uh, but you, know, you should be typing those in yourself and you know when we find that people have you know identical variable names, identical spacing, identical bugs, identical you know missed parentheses here and there, uh, it becomes obvious who is uh, you know, who is turning in work that is not their own. And and we've unfortunately we've had too many students over the history of 375 who have run into this problem of of getting caught plagiarizing. And we really really take this seriously. So I want to really emphasize that that you really have to turn in your own code. Uh, and finally, you know, it's important to show up for class. And that means, uh, you know, this year having flipped 375, it means you know, making sure you've watched the videos ahead of time, making sure you've answered those quiz questions with those videos ahead of time. Uh, the quiz questions associated with the lectures will expire. So if you don't take them uh, by the posted date, you won't be able to take them, you won't be able to get those points. Uh, and then, you know, making sure you come either physically or virtually uh, to the, the discussion sections that are occurring during the scheduled lecture times uh, to, to ask questions, to answer questions, and to participate in these additional hands-on activities, which will be worth additional points. Uh, and then the other really important thing about 375 is it's so important uh, to feel that you can ask for help when you need it in this class. Um, I've taught these topics uh, to hundreds of students, and uh, you know this material is going to be new for almost everyone. Very few people come into 375 with experience coding. Very few people come into 375 with a more advanced understanding of models or statistics. This is new material. Um, and with that, it can be confusing, and, and particularly learning to code can be confusing because it can be very sensitive to sensitive to you know small errors in, in syntax that eventually become second nature, but can be incredibly frustrating when you first in, encounter them. And so it, you know it's really important to to not feel like you have to keep banging your head against a problem and not asking for help. So if you, if you've spent hours on something and you can't figure it out, you know contact me, contact Betsy, please ask us. Uh, questions, please uh, send us, you know, email us what you've done and what you've tried and where it didn't work. And usually the two of us can troubleshoot uh, most problems very quickly and can help, you know, explain, uh, you know, if there's conceptual, uh, conceptual things you don't understand, explain the underlying concepts, but also help you learn how to uh, debug code more efficiently and, and how to catch some of these small errors that, that Honest to God, you know, they're really small, but they can be really frustrating. Um, thanks. Okay.